So how should we manage rivers? How should we manage fish populations? I'm here with Will Liddell. So, so tell me, Will, what are, we, um, what are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing here is um, essentially an artificial landscape. These water meadows were uh, created probably in the Middle Ages um, and they were, the channels were created so that the, the water meadows could be flooded at particular times of year for the benefit of the, of the livestock. Um, and so they, the, the, rivers are, the, the chalk rivers here have been like this for hundreds of years. They're a very rich ecosystem and, and obviously nowadays um, we don't operate the flooding that people used to years ago, probably not for a hundred years or more. Um, but um, uh, in the last hundred years or so, these rivers have been mainly used for uh, uh, dry fly fishing and, and very famous throughout the world. As, as many people may know, um, more than 90% of the chalk streams um, in the world are in England, and most of them are in the south of England, a lot of them in Hampshire. So this is a Hampshire chalk stream and uh, it looks wonderful. I mean, it's a very rich ecosystem. As I say, it's got uh, water weed, it's got uh, emergent vegetation, it's got overhanging trees. But because it was engineered and built for the purposes of flooding the water, water meadows, it's actually, they're quite straight dredge channels, quite deep and, and they're not really ideal um, for, for fish reproduction or indeed for many of the uh, invertebrates that uh, characteristically live in chalk rivers. So these would be the, ch the water meadows we could see over here yeah, that normally the, the, at times of high water levels it would flood those yeah, they, they and give nutrient rich waters. They were deliberately flooded uh, so people would block off the main channel and there were subsidiary channels along, along ridges which, uh, from which the water overflowed and then it came back in. This stream actually um, is is a collecting stream so so over there there's the the main channel of the river and and that's perched it's at a higher level so so water would have flowed across and and it would be collected and then it would return to the main channel further so, down. so it's come from the river over there and then come through the water meadows into here yes at times but in a very controlled fashion so at particular times of year particularly in the early spring when they wanted to keep the frost off the young growing grass and also um, before taking a hay cut in the, at, the, at the end of the summer. So this river is obviously lovely and we've just been snorkeling in here and seen, um, seen beautiful trout and uh, some stunning grayling. But there are other ways of managing these, aren't there? So what, what are you doing here? Well, what we're trying to address is the fact that actually this river, if you notice, it's quite straight, it's quite deep, it's, it's got steep bank sides and there isn't much in the way of habitat, really, mm -hmm. uh, for small fish. So what we've done is we've um, normally, before this, this river, uh, this channel took a sharp right-hand turn um, and went round the water meadows. But what we've done is we've um, taken a shortcut, if you like, down to another part of the river so that we've got increased fall, increased velocity. And we've, um, we've uh, dug a completely new channel, which has been filled with gravel, which we've managed to find um, because there's gravel underlying the whole of this landscape. And we've also uh, created a channel which is meandering, which at times is quite tight and at times quite wide. So there's a very wide diversity of habitat and flow. And furthermore, um, we've, uh, we've put trees in the river, which are kind of a bit anathema to the idea of uh, your classic chalk stream fishery. But, but, you, but you can see just down here, the trees down here, you can see how the current goes around the edge and how gravelly and shallow it is. And then over here, you have slower moving, deeper vegetation, weeds, and you've introduced some of these weeds, haven't you? Yes, I mean, what we did when, when we first, um, this is uh, three years in now, this, mm -hmm. this, this channel, this, this didn't exist three years ago, it was just pasture. So um, after we'd completed the, uh, uh, the building, if you like, of the channel and, and put the trees in, the next step was to take um, samples of weed from elsewhere in the main river and then we, and then we just planted them in the, in, the, in the riverbed and they grew quite quickly. You know, so that's so. just to speed up the process? Yeah, Presume just to speed up the advice. process, exactly. They, uh, this was a stocked fishery. Okay. So fishermen would come uh, and they would take away a couple of trout with them and, and we would every year put 
um, four or five hundred uh, stock trout mm -hmm. from a fish farm into the river that people would then catch and take away with them. But, and, but as I understand it, the, the idea here is because you've got the spawning grounds, because you've got the areas that the um, young fish can shelter in, uh, it's much more, you, you can sustain a viable wild population. And that's what you're now doing. You're no longer stocking, is that? That, that is the goal. It's, uh, so we'll have what's called a catch and release fishery. So all the fish should be wild fish. Um, and um, and that's, that has many kind of uh, benefits really relying on it. First of all, we aren't spending loads of money on, on stock fish. Secondly, the wild fish are better adapted um, to the habitat and, um, and they're kind of meant to be there. Um, and what we, what, if, you could, if you come over here and you look down, so what we've got, um, this tree for instance, um, the water the, the, the water is pressed down, pushed down, so it flushes out gravel. So you've got lovely yeah, clean, yeah, yeah. Yep. clean gravel, which is where the, the trout and hopefully Atlantic salmon like to make their reds and lay their eggs. And then further down, you can see that um, the river widens and you've got uh, shallow, shallower uh, water. And also you've got these um, uh, trees uh, which are in the river, which are providing a, a refuge for the young fish so that they're less, uh, you know, they're less susceptible, they're less vulnerable to predation by birds and by um, larger trout and uh, pike and so on and so forth. So that's, I like to think of that as being um, uh, the maternity unit up there and this is the sort <laughs> of the paediatric unit in the nursery. And, uh, and you know, the, the, uh, we're hoping that this is going to result in um, uh, much greater kind of uh, reproductive potential for the uh, for the indigenous brown trout and the way that we're we're trying to prove that is we've got a number of PhD students who have been working on the project since inception and they did um, invertebrate sampling and fish surveys and aquatic plant surveys on the river before uh, we uh, before the intervention and then um, and now they're following the kind of uh, the way in which the those populations are colonising this new stretch of river, and we're, we've got control sites elsewhere on the river that compare it. So we'll know whether or not what we're doing um, is having a beneficial effect for biodiversity. So the classic before-after controlled intervention exactly, backy design, exactly. which is That's the, what we're trying to do. The, the the best the best design you can have in this sort of process, and yeah. one and one that is obvious thing to do but almost always isn't done. And no. it really tells you whether or not this is effective or yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, I mean, river restoration has a long history, but a very shallow evidence base. And uh, that's because um, there's usually limited funds available and those funds tend to go into the engineering. And then the kind of assessment tends to be either forgotten or the money runs out. And, uh, but we've um, been lucky enough to secure funding from generous um, sponsors to make sure that in, in this circumstance we're gathering what should be excellent data and should answer a lot of questions about river restoration. Um, so, so I guess as a doctor you must be rather surprised by this, the fact that we so rarely use evidence and we so rarely test and we so rarely learn. And that would just be completely unacceptable. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yes. I mean, in, in medicine we are a little bit um, uh, keener to have evidence to back up what we do. Um, and yes, but... Uh, well, one of the problems is doing everything evidence-based is sometimes there is no evidence. <laughs> and if that's an excuse, an excuse for inaction, then that's a problem. But, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm really hoping that what we're doing here, which is, it, 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 it's, it's unusual. Not many people have done this kind of intervention in a chalk stream before. And I'm hoping it will help inform, um, uh, you know, other projects. And, and indeed, they're... You know, we've had a lot of people come here, um, express interest, and um, we've shown them round, and they've gone off, and, and a lot of them are now working on projects which uh, will kind of uh, hopefully have an overall benefit effect on, our, on the health of our rivers, which we all know are in a dire, stra and dire straits yeah. in this country. Absolutely. So, so what do um, you think of um, uh, fishing people as hating trees? Uh, how, how do they <laughs> respond to... Um, you know, you've taken a beautiful stream and changed it so dramatically. What's the response of people to this? Well, I think that there's, um, I think that fishermen are becoming 
more flexible and I think that uh, the, the, the current generation are looking for maybe a bit more challenge and, um, and I think also you know everybody is better informed about the environment now and, and everybody understands how fragile these rivers are and how threatened and you know if you went back 50 years people thought oh well those rivers will be there forever you know we don't mm -hmm. need to worry mm -hmm. about them they're, 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 they've always been here they'll always be there in the future but because we increasingly recognize the impact of uh, water abstraction climate change pollution of all kinds agricultural pollution plastic pollution as well as invasive alien species all these are threats to the river and i think most fishermen recognize that and most fishermen are keen that our rivers should be as resilient as possible especially in a changing uh, climate and so they they mainly see the reasons why we're we're making things more difficult for them uh, <laughs> and we're really messing the river up but well what we yeah. what we've got is something that's much more like a primordial river you know um obviously it's it's completely artificial we've built mm -hmm. all this we've engineered it we've designed it but it has a lot of the features of a of a river that might not have been significantly interfered with so so this this to me seems to be visionary this seems to be exactly what conservation needs. Uh, rivers are in a problem. Uh, this seems to be restoring it in a whole diversity of different ways. We know from the literature there's good evidence that adding wooding material improves mm. fish populations. We know the importance of variation in current speeds. It's using that information to, to trial out new approaches. And particularly, it's testing. It's testing so we're learning and um, I suspect this will work, but if it doesn't work, we've tested it and we've learned. So it's not building on myths, it's actually building on the evidence base. So, yes, so really yes. exciting, really visionary, uh, and I think it's going to look fabulous in years to come. But yeah. thanks for showing it to me. Yes, no, not a problem. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I think that the important thing is that this, this is one of the important things about this project. It's been a wonderful collaboration. Um, we've had, we we're lucky enough to have a lot of funding from... Uh, Southern Water, a utility company, obviously, who've been very generous in supporting it financially. We've had superb uh, support from the Rivers Trust and from the Piscatorial Society. And we've had Southampton University, 